Fernandez. Fish. Here. Harris. Here. Garza. Martinez Flores. Carpenter. Here. Gouray. Bowman. Betzer. Here. Lafoon. Here. The Historic and Design Review Commission is an advisory board appointed by the City Council. I'm Jeffrey Fetzer, Acting Chairman of the Historic and Design Review Commission, and Acting Vice Chair is Scott Carpenter. It is the function of the board to advise the City Manager and all relevant City Departments concerning all applications for permits for properties in historic districts, for landmarks on City property, and then the River Improvement Overlay. In considering whether to recommend approval or disapproval of an application for a certificate of appropriateness, the Historic and Design Review Commission shall be guided by the Secretary of the Interior Standard for Rehabilitation, the City of San Antonio's Unified Development Code, and any additional design guidelines adopted by City Council. An appeal of a decision by an administrative official can be filed in accordance with the City's Unified Development Code. If anyone present wishes to speak in favor of or in opposition to any item on today's agenda, please sign up on the Citizens to Hear Sheet. It is not necessary to sign up to speak if you are the owner of or a representative for a project on the agenda. You will be called on as the case is called. Other than case representatives, speakers for or opposed to an agenda item will be, will be limited to three minutes speaking time per speaker. Citizens may also sign up to yield their three minutes to another speaker who has signed up for a maximum time of nine minutes. Anyone who is yielding their time must be present at the time a speaker is called upon. Speakers will be called upon in the order in which they are signed up. Approval by the commission does not take the place of any type of permit. Permits must be obtained for all work. Certificates of appropriateness for work approved by the commission will be ready within 10 days and will be mailed and available to be picked up in person at the historic counter located on the first floor of this building. No work of any type is to be started without obtaining the appropriate city permits after a certificate of appropriateness has been issued by the Office of Historic Preservation. At this time, please silence your cell phones. Okay, well thank you everyone for being here on this rainy afternoon. Um, first and foremost, we want to welcome our new uh, mayoral appointed commission, Paolo Fernandez, welcome. Um, and as you know, she's replacing Michael Guarino, who was the um, outstanding chair of the commission, so we'll be um, taking action on the new chair and vice chair later. Things. Um, first, we have an announcement. Um, there are Spanish translation services available for the meeting. We have a quick video we're going to play. Hola, ¿qué tal? Bienvenido a esta junta. Para las personas que prefieren escuchar esta junta en español, pueden pasar con nuestro equipo de intérpretes al fondo de la sala para asistencia. Yo recuerda que ahora el portal de internet de la ciudad está disponible en español. Visita sanantonio.gov de Abonar Español para más información. Okay, thank you. Um, we also do have an announcement about an upcoming event this week. The Historic Run Crew is meeting on Thursday, June 27th at 7 p.m. And each is on the south side, 3119 Roosevelt. It's going to be a guided running tour of the Mission Historic District and the surrounding missions area. So um, that would be a good one to, uh, to attend if you are a runner or walker of any skill level. Um, we do have several citizens we heard signed up on general items. So we'll get to those in a minute. Um, first, we do have a couple of business items. Um, the first is uh, the election in, um, of the uh, chair and vice chair of the HDRC. Um, and so I'll kick back it over to our chair, our acting chair, Jeffrey Fetzer, who will um, call votes for both of those items. I call for nominations for um, chairman of the Historic and Design Review Commission. Chairman, I uh, nominate Jeff Fetzer for chairman. Second. Are there any other? Favor say aye. 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 Both same sign. Pass it. So we thought that might happen, so um, Jeff has vacated his role as vice chair, so now we need to elect a new vice chair as well. Okay. Go ahead, nominations for a vice chair. How many Scott Carpenter for a vice chair? Second. Motion the second to uh, nominate Scott Carpenter as the vice chair. Any other nominations? All in favor say aye. 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 Same sign. Motion passed. Great, thank you all. Um, the second order of business is um, formal action to amend the schedule of hearings. 
Um, so there was consensus that the July 3rd meeting should be canceled. Um, we've already advertised uh, this change of um, date on the website so that people could be aware, uh, but we do need formal action at this moment to make that change. Um, as you can see, this suggested the um, schedule um, in terms of the application deadline for the July 17th meeting as well. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I move for the uh, amendment of the uh, meeting schedule to be for July 3rd to uh, move to the July 17th. Second. Right. Second to discussion. On the favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Thank you. Um, and now we can move on to systems be heard. Um, if I call your name, please make sure you state your name and address clearly to the microphone for the record. Um, the first is Ricky Kushner. Frederica Kushner. Uh, I live at 405 East Myrtle Street in Hogan Hill. And I would like to speak with you all uh, about something that you have already heard, and uh, but uh, we feel that uh, you need to hear it again. Um, it is the uh, two properties at 307 and 309, 311 East Evergreen Street in Hogan Hill. Um, you, the HDRC, voted that those properties were eligible for landmarking as historic sites. Um, that automatically sent uh, the case to the city council, who was to say yes or no, and possibly send it on to the other departments of the city that needed to make changes. Um, it went to city council, and it was denied without discussion. The Office of Historic Presenta uh, Preservation did not make a presentation. Um, the people, I in particular, who was there uh, to speak in favor of it was taken aback because I didn't have a chance to make a presentation either, really, except for three minutes. Um, there was no discussion about the historic property at all. Uh, it was denied on the premise that the properties are on the McCullough Commercial Corridor. In fact, they are not. They are one lot off. And the intervening property between that property and McCullough is an eligible historic site, just like the others are. Um, they, right now, the way the, everything is working, uh, the owner um, wants to demolish the properties um, so that he can sell them to a developer who is going to put townhomes on them. There are already a, a huge number of townhomes that are um, under planning for that particular city block. Um, there is a person who has been involved with this uh, for quite some time, who does not presently live in the city, who is working, trying to work with the owner to purchase the properties so that they can be rehabilitated. So we need time. We need something to stop the demolition. There is a fence around the property right now. Uh, as far as we know, demolition has not been pulled yet. That's time. Okay. But, but we need your help to delay this so that we can talk with the owner and see if we can get these things saved. Thank you. Thank you. Stephen Fonzo. Hello, I'm Stephen Fonzo, 324 East Mistletoe Avenue. I'm also a resident of Tobin Hill. I'm building on Ricky Kushner's comments. I oppose demolition of the houses at 307 and 311 East Evergreen. I request that all demolitions be halted and that a new historic review and city council hearing take place on the grounds of their historic significance and because proper procedures were not followed during the city council hearing. 
I have 16 years experience in the fields of archaeology, cultural resources management, and historic preservation. In that time, I have co-authored and contributed to numerous National Register nominations and participated in historic building and site evaluations. It is clear to me that the Cole House at 307 East Evergreen is potentially eligible for listing based on its association with Medal of Honor recipient, Lieutenant Colonel Robert G. Cole, and it deserves a formal review by the State Historic Preservation Office to determine whether it is eligible. It is also clear, as Ms. Kushner presented, that these factors were not discussed at the City Council hearing. Um, and that the vote was based only on the false claim that the buildings are located on the McCullough Business Corridor. Um, as it is, residents of the neighborhood have been taking on the tasks of research and crisis management on our own as unpaid volunteers with limited time and resources. And we are now faced with an emergency situation where two historic buildings are under immediate threat of permanent and irreversible destruction. Because decisions and procedures always has an impact on the neighborhood. Um, so I think it should only be done when it's necessary, and it's not at all necessary in this case. Uh, the historic home across the street from me uh, was just recently demolished this past year on East Mistletoe, and debris in the air, what you call demolition dust, um, made me and my husband very sick for an extended period. In my case, it was acute bronchitis. Um, it interrupted my work. It was very painful, and it was due to that demolition process. Demolition is a nuisance, it's an eyesore, and it's a health threat, and I want to make people aware of that. Um, and I think it should only be done for good reason. There's no good reason to tear down these homes people would be interested. We know at least one person is interested in buying these homes if given the chance, and they were never given that chance. Um, they're in fine shape. This is a desirable neighborhood, an increasingly desirable neighborhood, and, and many people come to Tobin Hill precisely to fix up and live in historic homes like these. Uh, 307, the home of Lieutenant Robert G. Cole, is especially historic. Buildings tie us to the past in a special way, and I don't think I need to elaborate that on that in this city known for the Alamo. Um, further studying and designating this home gives us the chance to learn about and commemorate this local hero who's also an American hero. If we needed to tear these buildings down for safety reasons or for a really necessary construction like a fire station, I would understand. Again, I wouldn't like it just because demolition always disrupts the neighborhood, um, but I would understand. And that's not the case here. There's no good reason to disrupt and endanger the people who live and work in the neighborhood and to sever an irreplaceable link to the past just for a quick buck. Thank you. Hey, Michelle. Hello, I'm Anissa Shell. I live at 430 East Mistletoe Avenue. I'm on the board of the Tobin Hill Community Association and a member of the Tier 1 Neighborhood Coalition, but I am speaking for myself as a concerned citizen about the same case, 307 and 309 East Evergreen. You did hear this case, and you supported the landmark designation of this case. Um, we presented thorough research, um, a fantastic statement of significance, that was well-researched and multiple letters of support from current and former San Antonio residents, including the U.S. Army at Fort Sam Houston, the San Antonio Conservation Society, and the North St. Mary's Business Association. We appreciate that you recommended the landmark designation of these houses. It is within your power to move to create a, a historic district for these houses, um, and that is what we are asking you to do today. Tobin Hill has faced demolition after demolition in the last two years. Um, we continue to see our residential core eroded and replaced with cheaply and quickly built housing that is sold for top dollar. This housing is not affordable or workforce housing, which is a goal of our city. It's simply market rate designed to maximize profits in the short term. We're losing Tobin Hill's unique character and history with every demolition. When I posted the initial demolition request regarding these houses to the Tobin Hill Community Association Facebook page, the post received over 13,000 impressions. That is more than any post we have ever gotten, ever, on that page. These homes are important to our community. 
in addition to the very notable history of the Lieutenant Colonel Robert G. Cole, the homes are um, important to our local music community. They were venues for live music and recording music, and they were also used um, for the offices of Mujeres Unidas, uh, which is, um, provides uh, HIV and AIDS um, shelter for women. They moved their offices, but these houses are important to our current recent history as well as our older history. We're asking that you help us stall the demolition by moving for a historic district of these two houses. Thank you. Abby Zions. Patty Zions, private citizen for this one, 2519 Hunters Green, District 8. I concur with the Tobin Hill Neighborhood Association. In my two years as serving as First Vice President of the San Antonio Conservation Society, I've watched the difficult decisions that have been made before this commission. This is one of those that is also a difficult decision because you've already ruled that these homes are historic, but council chose otherwise. You all represent a council district and you all have the, the ear of your council people. I certainly hope that you will take this under advisement and visit with your council people and the mayor with this. Um, one of the first things I did as a newly elected first vice president was attend a camp meeting, which I hope y'all all, all go to and I think some of you were there. My takeaway from that was preservation is about managing change. San Antonio is at a crossroads right now. The city is changing rapidly, but the core issues in the city for the past, in the Conservation Society history of 94 years, has been to manage change, manage our preservation, keep the character, the charm, and the culture of our city, and not tear down and build new when you can save and repurpose. I think this is one of those cases that deserves a second look. Frankly, I don't know how you go about doing that at this point, but I certainly hope that each one of you will give this consideration and visit with your councilman and see if there's something that can be done to help make a preserved historic district in this part of Tobin Hill. Thank you. Lynn I'm Lynn Knappick. I live at 312 Pearl Parkway in Tobin Hill. <clears throat> I have nothing nearly as eloquent to say as all of it. <laughs> These guys did. I'm a realtor and uh, when we came to the first meeting about this, the owner said that he had had his, house, his property on the market for years and never been able to sell it. I found three listings for rent over all these years. So he has not had his property on the market for years. It's not a drain on him because he cannot sell the property. And it appears that we have found a buyer for his property. And so we can help him take care of that and we can save the property, save the houses also. So I also want to encourage you to do whatever you can to help us save these properties until we can. That's all we have signed in this week. A couple of questions for staff. One is, um, when it came before council, what was the process that, that OHP uh, went through to uh, inform council of our recommendation? So when we take one of these forward to council, we manage that council item. So that means that we create a council memo that gets posted online, um, as well as printing materials for council members. Um, so there was a presentation ready to go. Um, but that's up to council members requesting the presentation to be given, so we weren't requested to give the presentation at that time. But the information was provided to, uh, to council members in advance. And um, since this is not on our agenda today, how would we as a commission uh, discuss this with possible to consider options for uh, this or other? Um, yeah, so so I think I heard one of the um, citizens um, request that um, the HTRC create a district. Um, that is a, an option um, available in the development code. Um, typically they are um, initiated by somebody living in the neighborhood, but there's an option by which staff or the HTRC or city council can initiate the, the district process. Um, we would need an agenda item to do that to really discuss what that would look like and, and get uh, a clear direction to staff about how to proceed. 
uh, where we can start to place out on the next available agenda. <coughs> Is there a way to uh, kind of stabilize or, or postpone the demolition of this? I mean, because it seems as though that would be the main concern is that if this was pushed to the next agenda, then of course there's nothing you can do if it's already gone, correct? Yeah, certainly if there's like a pending uh, process, uh, we certainly know that the properties are eligible and so there are provisions in the code for, for what can be done. We would honestly, if a demolition permit came in today, we'd have to talk to the city attorney's office about what our options are. So if we happen to create a district that supersede what has already been denied as creating a store, can they get still move forward? It would be a, a new request and a sort of a, a new method of, of designating properties. So. Um, it wouldn't necessarily supersede right away, but if, it, if those properties were included as part of the district, it would be protected. Um, is there any advantage to looking at amending the existing district rather than creating a new district for just two properties? Yeah, we're, we're getting into a lot of discussion about the, the mechanics and the details of what a district would look like, and so that really should be on the, the agenda item for, for motion. But, but yes, there's multiple options for how it's done. So there has not been a demo permit pool yet for these projects, is that correct? That's correct. And that demo permit would have to be approved by OHP, correct? Correct. I agree, we definitely need to get this on next agenda. Right. Uh, we don't need to take a vote on whether we'll add it. Um, there seems to be enough interest in that, so we will add it on the July 17th agenda. Thank you very much. Any other questions? And I think we are now able to move on to our regular agenda. Um, so we have steps to be heard on a couple of items, um, nothing on consent. Mr. Chairman, I move for approval for the items of consent with staff stipulations. I have a motion and second for approval of the items on the consent agenda A. Any further discussion? All right. I'd like to call to order the I'd like to call I'd like to call to order the historic and design review commission. And you're going to tell we do have a quick announcement regarding translation services for the meeting. Hola, ¿qué tal? Bienvenido a esta junta. Para los personas que prefieren escuchar, esta junta en español puede pasar con nuestro equipo de intérpretes al fondo de la sala para asistencia. Y recuerda que ahora el portal de internet de la ciudad está disponible en español. Visita sanatorio.gov diagonal español para más información. Thank you. And before we move on to individual items, we do have two citizens signed in for general items. Um, first is Monica Spino. If you are speaking, please state your name and address in the microphone for the record. Monica Sabino, 1120 East Crockett, and I just want to address um, the evergreen houses that came before y'all earlier today. I have two comments, and I have one to ask for you guys. Um, one of the comments is I, I am happy to add my voice to so many voices in support that happened earlier today for uh, the consideration of the historic district for those two buildings on Evergreen, East Evergreen. And my second comment is I do understand that there is an action moving forward where this will go on to the next sessions, HDRC, correct? And the fact that your commission supported it, OHP supported the designation, and so many neighbors supported the de designation is really excellent. Uh, it's really um, great news. Um, and I understand you'll work out technical parts of that um, designation at the next meeting or for the next hearing. My ask to you, though, is in the subsequent weeks between today and that hearing, what do we have to preserve that, those buildings? They are vulnerable. They are technically unprotected. If I worked for the owner, I could go tomorrow 
and get a demolition permit. Is that true? If that were the case, what can we do? What can y'all do today to make sure, to guarantee that it doesn't happen? Do I have three minutes left? Please. <laughs> Um, if somebody could uh, entertain that idea. Um, fr I mean, frankly, we could go tomorrow and ask for it to be taken down. Is there something, can we make a motion that um, you follow through and put, it, put the item on the agenda, um, but that no demo permits can be taken? Can that be done? I don't think it can, and there's not an item on this agenda for which a motion could be taken. Um, but I mentioned earlier during the AI comes that we would work with the attorney's office to see um, what our options were since there is interest in the application. Thank you for your consideration. And the next is uh, Barbara Garcia. I guess it's good evening now. <laughs> Um, I'm Barbara Garcia. I live at 932 North Pine Street in Dignity Hill. The Dignity Hill Neighborhood Development Advisory Committee has reviewed the proposal submitted for today's cases. The official letter, which was signed by the DHC president, is in the case files. Uh, in consideration of everyone's time, we've cons consolidated all but two of our comments into the following categories. Uh, cases that the INDEC committee supports as presented. Case number 2019-323 for 412 Hay Street. Case number 2019-259 for 119 Buford Alley. Uh, case 2019-337 for 831 Burleson Street and case 2019-326 for 616 Sherman Street. And then cases uh, that we do not support. Um, case number 2019-270 for 215 Muncie Street, uh, which is for an attached carport. The committee does not support the project as presented. It does support staff recommendations for the building, for building the carport to the rear of the property. And case 2019-352 for 1021 North Palmetto Street, the committee agrees with staff stipulations that the faux wood grain siding should not be used. 